Uh, Beth asked this question. Uh, I, I just did a video, by the way, on how to meditate on the Word of God. I tried to say how. Um, this next one is related. Um, it's why is meditating on the Word of God vital to our walk? And I already talked about it in that, so just watch that. Bye. <laughs> I just see well. Let me let me keep this in front of me. Make sure I really nail it if I can. So that's a that's another good question. If you think about it, I love the words, uh, the questions, who, what, when, where, why, how. This is a good way, by the way, of taking the Bible and the Scripture. It's, um, it's not original, uh, but if you take it and then you think about who's being spoken to and then what is he saying and what's happening around him and, you know, her or whatever, all those, all the, you take the big questions. Well, she just asked Cal, now the question is why. Why is meditating on the Word of God vital to our work walk. And I would say it is pretty vital. It's essential. Um, I think what happens is um, the Word of God, it says, is magnified uh, above His name. Now, in some translations, it says the word, the name and the Word is above all things else, magnified above all things else. Either way, um, the Word of God is extremely high um, because basically it's him, I said this in the last video, revealing himself, just like I reveal myself and you reveal yourself by your communications, by your word. So we can't live life spiritually or like how we should or anything without the word of God. Isn't that what Jesus said? Man shall not live by bread alone. It's a vital thing, just like food is vital to you. It's essential. Um, the word of God is indispensable to you. And it gives you the nourishment that you need. It gives you the truth that you need to bombard lies or to push out lies. Um, it's light in the darkness. Your word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. And on and on and on. It's all. It's a guide to you. It just. It goes on and on. And so that's why it's vital. Because if you don't really continually meditate, your mind's going to be meditating and talking about other stuff. And if you're talking about other stuff, you're meditating on other stuff, you're not nourishing your spirit. Your spirit kind of shrivels up more. It gets weaker. So Jesus said this in John 6, 63. He said, my words are spirit and they are life. See? Uh, and so the word of God is a spiritual book. It's not a science book. Oh, there's science involved. It's not a history book. It's history involved. It's not a psychological manual, although psychology is in there. <laughs> the true psychology, the true truth. Not the what Paul called so-called science. Um, the fact is, it's it, it's a spiritual book. It's a book that feeds your spirit, which is the most important part of you. It's the one thing that lasts forever. Your body's not gonna last forever. It's gonna be changed, of course. But it's it, you know your spirit is is the main thing. It's the deep inner core of you. It's the thing that goes beyond your mind. Paul said, "I will pray with my spirit, and I will pray with my understanding also." And so. There's it's spiritual stuff. It's your spirit that's really important. And the Word of God is what feeds that part. So you don't get fed, it's, you're going to be weak and you're going to eventually die or something. That's why, that's why I would say the Word of God is vital to our walk. Imagine eating once a week in church. I mean, like church. People come to church once a week. Imagine eating a meal once a week. You're going to be pretty weak and you're going to be pretty flimsy and you're not going to have very much strength and all that. So for power and vitality, vital vitality, vitality, <laughs> and uh, spiritual energy, and uh, and then also if you're not really doing, if you're not really focused on the Word of God, then uh, then you're also tempted more. I mean, the temptation, the lust of your flesh, or it be a, it could be a desire for pride or vainglory or materialism or or um, it could be lust for other things you know whatever the bible here's that's a verse and, and mark 4 it says in mark 4 it says the lust of other things choke the word and so if you met if you're constantly meditating on the word you don't have time for this other stuff <laughs> like you don't have time to feed on vanity vain meaningless things trivia trivial things trifling things it doesn't even matter you know so Focus your mind on substance. Eat stuff. Don't eat junk food. You know, you are what you eat. And so Jesus said, take heed on how you hear. Another, that's in Mark, either Mark 4 or Luke 8. And then he said, take, and then another passage, he said, take what you hear. I think that's in Mark. I'm not sure. Um, but you put them together, take how and what. You know, uh, like what you're doing and how you take it in. And so I would just really um, say that 
Um, why is meditating the word of God vital to your wealth? Uh, walk strength. I said that. And also guidance. I, I said that. That's actually I cover pretty much. Why is meditating the word of God vital to your walk? I think that really answers it, especially the fact that um, you're either going to think of things that are of God or you think of the things that are of self and of the world. And it's more important to think of things that are God. Now, we do have to take time to live in this world. You have to have a job. You have to be qualified in your, to do some career responsibilities and things like that. The cool thing about God is that you can meditate on it all day and all night while you're doing other things. Just like walking. You know, I don't think about left foot, now right foot, now left foot, now right foot, now left foot. I got to make sure I, you know, open my legs far enough to get somewhere progressively quick. It just becomes natural, you know, or just like breathing. You know, you don't think of breathing. Okay, inhale, exhale, 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 inhale, exhale. <laughs> so by, if you put the Word of God in you, it's not, meditating on the Word is partially taking time and really reading it and thinking about it while you're reading, you're meditating on it. But then it becomes your life. Uh, you do it just like breathing. You're just like walking and you walk in the word of God. You live in the word of God. You think about the word of God. You talk about the word of God and it becomes a yours and you're actually constantly feeding yourself and you're, and you're also another reason is because it helps you help others. Um, I love how you probably experienced this if you're a Christian, um, where I've read a passage or something and I, and then that day or the next day I use it for someone else. It happens hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, innumerable no, number of times. And also as you speak, as you meditate in the word, God speaks through that word. And then, and it gives you what you need at the moment or what you're going to need later. The other thing is I love how the spirit of God will give me something. And then later on, I get in a conversation with someone that kind of say the same thing, but I've had that where, I get uh, not just the word of God, but I remember I'm going to talk to someone. I didn't realize I was going to say something to someone that I happened to think of earlier and he's preparing you. So it's vital for your walk for preparing yourself for the things that are coming. See, God knows the future. And so <laughs> on and on and on. All right. On and on and on. Hope you got some out of that. I enjoy talking about him. He's good. Get into the word of God and meditate in it.